Hi, I'm Jo from JH Leather and this is Skyler and in this video we'll be showing you how to make this shoulder bag. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you are going to want to do is print off your patterns. Now, from the experience I've had with these, we want to put the scale to fit to paper and that gets the most accurate printing results. And so once you have printed off your patterns, we're going to roughly cut out the items on the first page and then with the main body, we want to accurately cut the long inside edge and then either the top of the bottom depending on which pattern you are using so that it helps us when we come to glue these onto our card to get them nicely aligned. So once you've cut your patterns out for longevity reasons, what you can do is to actually glue them onto some thick two mil card and then sort of you'll be able to get a lot of reuse out of them. If you don't have that, however, you can glue them onto a cereal box. That is absolutely fine. And with the main body pattern for your bag, you wanna make sure you get that nice and accurate and glued together. So you may want to sharpen your knife here. And then once you have done that, we can now cut out our patterns accurately. And with the long stretches, what I like to do is using a ruler, have that weighted down, and then I can use that as a guide to make sure my line is nice and straight. And now you should have all your patterns printed and backed with card and looking something like this and now we've done that we can go on and mark these onto our leather so for the leather used in this and all the information about where you can get sort of leather like this for your project that is all in the guide that comes with the downloadable pattern pack And we want to cut two straps to go with this. So we're going to set our strap cutter to one inch wide and we're going to cut two one inch straps. Now, depending on the size of your hide, you may need further straps or maybe one will be enough. What we're going to do now is we're going to mark out with our point strap pattern, the main point strap for the front of the bag. So once we've cut the point out, we can then put our pattern on and mark that hole. And that's just going to be the one hole that we have on this strap. And then we can mark the overall measurement, which is going to be 12 and a half inches. And then using our set square, we're going to square that end and nick the two corners as well. And on our main pattern, 
We also want to transfer the maker's marks that are marked onto it onto our leather below. And now if you don't do it at this stage, that's fine. We can do that at a later date throughout the build. And so you should have all your parts cut out and looking something like these. And what we're going to do is with a number one edge tool, we're going to start edging our pieces. So on our main bag, we're going to edge the whole of the nice grain side. And then on the flesh side, we're going to edge along just that very top straight edge. And then we're going to get our pattern guide and we're going to mark on where the stitch mark locations are. And what we will do is then edge around the curved end between these two points because these are not going to have stitching underneath them. And on our buckle Ds, we're just going to edge on the grain side from the point just over halfway, leaving about three quarters of an inch or so at the end. On our point safe, we have got some marks here, which we will transfer to the flesh side of our point safe. And then we will edge in between these two marks. And once you've done the flesh side on the point safe, you can then number one edge around the whole of the grain side. With our buckle shape, what we're going to do is mark that center mark for where our crew will be. And then using a set square, we're just going to draw a line just to even that up. For the edging on this, we're going to use our number one edge tool just on the grain side. We're going to go just past that crew location. On our point strap, we're going to edge the whole of the grain side. And then once again, we're going to get our pattern back and we can mark on the flesh side where we're going to edge from. So we just want to put that location mark on and then using a set square, we can draw a line across and we're going to edge up from that towards the end of the point. And on our gussets, we're going to edge on the flesh side, just along that short top section. And then we can edge all the way around the grain side. Now we've done that, we can get our stain out and we're going to stain all of our components. And using either a polishing cloth or a burnishing stick, we can then polish the edges as well. And then we will also be doing a crease line. So my crease is usually about 1 16th of an inch and we are going to Heat that up and we're going to use that on all of our components. So we're now going to prepare our gussets. So what we're going to do is set our dividers to one quarter of an inch and on the flesh side we're going to mark that all the way around except for the short edge at the top. We're then going to use a stitch groover and we're going to groove a line following the line that we have just 
marked on at a quarter of an inch. We don't need to take too much off, although on the flesh side, the stitch groover can get blocked off a bit, so you may need to do a few passes with it. Okay, so once you've finished grooving, you are going to want to use either a skirt shave or I think they are called French shaves also. And we are going to run that along the groove that we have just made. And that's just going to skive down the edges of our gussets nicely. So if you don't have a French shave, that is not a problem. This You don't have to do this. It may just make your sort of gluing in of your gussets a bit more difficult when we get to that part of the build. And so now we have done that to both of our gussets, we're going to prep our D shapes. So this is what the D rings are going to attach to. And what we want to do is just make the turn. So basically that flat edge of the little strap sits in line with just where the egg point begins. We're going to put our D-ring in and we're going to mark with our thumbnail as tight as we can to the D-ring. We are then going to even this up with our set square and we're going to mark the same onto our second D shape. And then using our dividers at our stitching width, we're going to draw a line between these two dots. And then we can use our pricking irons and stitch mark along this line. So I'm using 3.38 millimeter irons from Abbey England, but any pricking irons that you have are suitable for this project. Once we've done that, we are going to skive down both the point end and the flat end. So the point end, we're going to skive down to half thickness and the flat end, which is going to be behind our turn, we want to skive down to nothing. So that once we have our turn stitched in, there won't be any lump there where the sort of end of that part is. And then we can glue these together with our D rings in place. So I'm using contact adhesive here. And now we have our little D-ring shapes made up, we can then use our pattern and mark on the locator. And that is where the very point of the D-ring shape is going to go. So once we've got them, we can make sure that they are in the center of our gusset. And then we will be fixing or gluing our shapes in place. So you might want to scruff up your leather just a little bit underneath where that D-ring is gonna sit. And that would just help the glue to stick the two surfaces together. And again, I'm using contact adhesive here to glue the shapes onto the gussets. And once you have your D's glued on in place, you want to just make sure that they are even on both sides with your ruler. We are then going to get our point strap safe and we are going to mark on the stitching marks from the pattern onto the grain side of our safe and using our dividers draw a line between the two marks and we're going to do this on both ends. We can now use our stitch marker and stitch mark along these lines. And now what we want to do is skive these ends down to half thickness and we're going to start just behind where the sort of turn or the egg point on that starts. And you can cut off any fluffy bits as well. So 
So we are now going to get our point strap and our pattern and we're just going to mark on where our stitching needs to be. So that's at the end of this rectangle on the pattern and then use your set square and even that up to the other side. And using your dividers, we're going to draw two lines down the long ends and then one across the bottom. And again, we can then stitch mark this. And once we're done with our stitch marking, we are once again going to skive. So we want to skive the last half inch to five eighths or so down to half thickness. And we can now start assembling these two components onto our main bag. So if you haven't already, you will have some marks on your bag from the pattern. And that will be the location of this point safe. And you can once again scruff up your leather underneath just a little bit to help the glue to stick to both of the leather parts. And remembering with contact adhesive you need to glue both parts of your leather for it to work properly and then you can glue that on in place and use your ruler just to even that up. We can then glue on our point strap And again, measuring just to make sure that it is in the middle. And we should now have our components ready and we're going to start stitching these together. So I'm starting here with the little D shapes on the gusset and I'm going to do two back stitches to start with so that this side will match my other side when I do one and a half back stitches at the end. And what we're going to do is we're going to stitch everything on that we have glued down so far. So that is the two little D shapes, the point strap and the point safe. So I am using a linen thread for this project, so obviously I can't burn the ends of my threads. So what I'm going to do instead is use a bit of PVA glue and just dab that on the cut ends of my threads. And now hopefully you have all your components looking a bit like this and we're now going to sort out our buckle shape. So what we want to do is using our dividers we're going to draw two tram lines that are crew punch can fit in. So the crew punch that I am using is a 37 crew, but this will depend entirely on the size of the buckle tongue 
on your buckle that you have chosen to use. So I'm using single roller buckles and for these the 37 crew that I have is the best option. And once you have your tram lines put on and your guide in place, you can then punch your crew all the way through your buckle shape. And then we're going to pop our buckle in and we're going to mark with our thumbnail close as possible to the buckle for our stitching. And we can then even that up with our set square. And using our dividers at our stitching width, we can draw a line between these two points. And once we've done that, we can then use our pricking iron and stitch mark along this line. And now once we've done stitch marking, we're going to skive down the point end to half thickness and the straight end we're going to skive down to nothing. And now I am going to be using a fixed loop on my shape, so I'm going to put my looping around it and mark just where the ends meet. Now you don't have to use a loop, you can use a little metal wire loop if you want, or if you're using a whole buckle, you will not need a loop at all. But once we've done that, we can then start assembling our buckle shape. So we're going to put a bit of glue on the back side of this. And then, like I said, as I am using a loop, I am then going to put this halfway across my strap and mark with my thumbnail so I know where the edge of that loop needs to sit. And that wants to sit between the first and second stitch markers so that it gets caught in the first stitch of our shape. And now once we've done that, we are then going to glue this onto our bag. So if you haven't already, you will just need to put the locator point onto your bag and then you can scruff up just underneath there a little bit. And then using some contact adhesive, we're going to glue this in place. And we just want to use our ruler and just measure up and make sure that that is in the center of our bag and it is not crooked at all. And now for this, I'm also going to add in a couple of tacks. This is just going to help keep that in place because this bit is a little bit fiddly in the clams. Once you're happy, we are then going to stitch this in place. So for this, we are going to do one back stitch and then we are going to do one stitch over the edge through just the main body of the bag. Now, the reason for this is so that we can get that first stitch nice and tight. And as we've got that loop, there is not going to be any issues with that stitch of the edge wearing at all. So you can see I've done my back stitch here and now I'm all in, in line with that very first stitch closest to the buckle, but just through the main body of the bag. So we're going to have a bit of an L shape here. So you can see I've just pulled that nice and tight and you can see how nice and tight that stitch is now on the buckle. And then once you've done that, you can then carry on and stitch this as normal.
And now once you get towards the end of your buckle tape, what we're going to do is we're going to pre-all the last four or so stitch marks of our tape. And then we're going to put our loop in place. And now doing this means that we've got a bit of a guide already there for our all to follow when we now reall the holes with the loop in place. And we want to aim to get our all into the original holes that we have on the back side of our bag. And then once you're doing the first stitch on your loop, you want to put your needle through the loop and then you can all from the other side, else you're going to end up having a stitch over the top of that loop and we don't want that. And then once you have stitched your loop, we want to make sure you do one stitch over the edge just to match the original side. And then we can do a one and a half back stitches. Okay, so you should have your components looking something like this. And what we're going to do now is just do some finishing touches whilst everything is flat, as it's a little bit easier to do this now and then when the bag is finished. So to start with, we are going to use a loop stick and just block that loop that we have just stitched in to our buckle shape. And you can now do a little bit of restaining on your components and we are also going to recrease everything that we have stitched so far. Like I said, because it's flat, it is easier to do that now than afterwards once we've got our bag together. Okay, okay. So once we've done that, we can then put our point strap through the point safe. So that is in place. And we're now going to stitch mark or mark for our stitching on our main body of the bag. So if you haven't already, you will need to just transfer the stitching marks from your pattern onto the body of your bag. And then we're going to draw a line down to the straight edge of the bag. And then using our pricky knives, we can stitch mark along that line. Okay, so now we have done our stitch marking, what we are going to do is start to glue our gussets into our main bag. So using our contact adhesive, once again, we're going to glue along the two straight sides of our bag. So 
So we can then glue along the sides of our gussets as well. And you can see here, I have stained that area that was sort of skived down. That's an optional extra, and it is up to you if you would like to do that. But once you've got your glue on, what we're going to do is using some warm water, just wet those edges. And that's going to help our edges to turn when we get them glued into our bag. So we're going to start by lining them up with that sort of top straight edge. And now this bit can be a bit fiddly, but you just need to persevere. And what we're going to do is we're going to get our edges aligned all the way around our bag. So it might need a bit of manipulation and you may need to get some clips just to hold that the gussets of your bag in place whilst you do this because they do have a tendency to pull apart to start with. So what I like to do is glue the front edge down and then sort of start getting the turn in place but before that is in fully I will then glue in to the sort of second half of the straight edge of the bag making sure that that gusset is sitting so that there's one stitch mark over the edge and like I said this bit is a bit fiddly so if you need to use some clips please do And then once you've got the one side in, you can do the other side. So like I said, I do the two straight edges first, just to make sure that they are in place. And then the gusset can sort of slip in around that. And you may need to use your bone folder to help push it into the right place. But the aim here is to get all of our edges flush together. Okay, so now we've got our gussets in, what we're going to do is double hand stitch all the way around these. So I have taken a generous arm width and a half for this, just to ensure that I do have enough thread to go all the way around. And on this, we're going to do one back stitch and a stitch over the edge. And so once you've done your back stitch and your stitch over the edge, you can then continue stitching your bag as usual.
Hello. No, you can't come up. <laughs> you can't come up. No, what are you doing? What are you doing? Hello. Get down. Skylar, get down. Skylar. Skylar. <laughs> no, get down. Get down. Go away. Skylar, get down. Get down. Go on, get down. Stay there. You stay down there. And so once you get to the end of your stitching, you're going to make sure you have one stitch over the edge of that gusset and then you're going to do one and a half back stitches. Now once you've got your first gusset in place, you can then stitch in the other side as well. And so you should have something that looks a little bit like this. And as I said earlier, I'm using linen thread. So I'm going to use a bit of PVA glue just on the ends, or the cut ends of my thread, just to make sure that they stay in place. And we're now going to start making our point strap. So we should have one strap and a bit left over from earlier. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut a square end on one, on the shorter one, and then we're going to mark one and a half inches down on the grain side, and then flip that over and mark three inches on the flesh side. That is going to be our buckle turn. So I want my strap to be 10 inches overall when made up. So I'm going to measure 12 inches from that center crew point, as I'm going to have a two inch turn on the other end of this buckle strap. Using the guide from earlier, we can then draw on that egg point and cut around this. And then on the flesh side of that end that we have just cut the point for, we're going to mark four inches and that is going to be where the very point of that turn is going to sit. And then using our number one edge tool, we're going to edge between that mark and the buckle turn that we have just marked out as well on the flesh side and all around on the grain side. So we are going to want to mark our point strap out with this as well. So we're going to once again use our guide to cut an egg point and then we're going to mark where that hole is and that's going to be the first hole on our shoulder strap. So I'm going to mark nine holes one inch apart for this strap and now the overall length of this strap is up to you. Um, my hide is quite short so I wanted this strap to be as long as possible so I am just putting my pan straight on the edge here and drawing another egg point on that end and then cutting this out with my head knife and we can then number one edge the whole of the grain side of our shoulder point strap and then on the flesh side we're going to do is make sure we have the turn end and we are once again going to mark four inches because we're going to have a two inch turn and we're going to edge from there all the way up and around on the flesh side and then we can stain and crease these two straps 
Once we've done that, we're going to set our dividers and we are going to draw another set of tram lines for our buckle end on this and punch our crew all the way through. Once we've done that, we can then make or fold the turn over and we're going to pop our buckle in and we're going to mark as close as we can to that buckle on the front side of that strap. So you can see here I'm pinching that nice and close to the buckle and marking with my thumbnail. We also want to mark where that back of the turn sits and we'll mark there as well. And then using our set square we can even these lines up onto the other side of our strap. We're then going to set our dividers to our stitching width and draw a little cross down the bottom of our point end as so we can see where our stitch line needs to be. We can then put our clip onto our strap and what we're going to do is hold that in place and then using an awl, we're going to mark through the very centre of the sort of cross that we have just made on the end of that turn. We're going to push that all the way through so the very end of that awl comes out and marks where our stitching needs to finish. We can then, with the awl in, hold that turn nice and tight to the clip and mark where it needs to, our stitching needs to finish. And also we want to mark where the sort of egg point starts. So we'll have two marks on one side, which we can then transfer to the other side, which will be a straight line between them. And then we're going to even up the center hole just to make sure that that is central. And using a circle object, we are going to make an egg point on that end. And this is the same technique that we'll be using on the other strap that we have cut out. And once we have everything marked out, we can stitch mark along the lines that we have just made. And once we have everything marked out, we can then skive the ends of all our turns down to half thickness. Now for my buckle strap, I need another fixed loop. And I'm also going to mark out for a running loop. So for this, I'm going to wrap the strap all the way around and have a bit of an overlap here. It doesn't need to be too big, this overlap, and we're just going to mark with our thumb where we want that to be. And we can cut that off. And we're then going to nick the corners on this little loop as well. So now we've done that, we can then wrap it around our strap once again, and we're going to mark where that overlap sort of finishes with our thumbnail. And then using our stitch iron or our pricking irons, we're going to stitch mark up to that point. So for mine, this is just three pricking marks. I want to mark that on all four ends of our loop. Now that we've done our stitch marking, we are going to just skive down the very ends of this loop down to half thickness. And once we know, we can then start assembling our buckle turn. So we're going to pop a buckle in and then as before with our loop, we're going to mark where the center is and then we're going to actually tack these in place. I find with buckle turns and loops, it is easier to use tacks than it is to glue them. I'm just going to tack the loop and a bit further back on the turn just to hold everything straight and in place. We can then glue on our point strap end, our shoulder strap with the holes marked out. We can glue that onto our clip.
So we're now going to stitch our running loop. So if you are new to running loops, I have a whole video dedicated on how to make them, which I shall link above so you can see what to do there. Just for time saving purposes, I'm just going to whiz through this on this video so we can keep the time down a bit. And then once you stitch your running loop, you can then block it on to your loop stick. And then once that is blocking, you can stitch your buckle turn and your strap with is attached to the clip. So again, for these, we are going to do two back stitches so that they match the other side when we do our one and a half back stitches. Now we've finished stitching, what we're going to do is just do some finishing touches on this running loop. So we're just going to use the bone folder and just polish the edges and then we're going to tap that down with our tack hammer just to get this loop nice and square. Once we've done that we're going to heat up our screw crease and we're just going to recrease all around this running loop. And then once we've done our finishing touches to this running loop, we can put this onto our buckle strap and we can then glue the clip onto this remaining end of our strap. And then once we've got that all glued in, we can then double hand stitch our final clip to our shoulder strap. And so once we've finished stitching all our straps, I'm just going to put a little bit more PVA glue on to the cut ends of my threads just to hold them in place. We can then start doing our finishing touches. So we're going to even up our holes on our point strap of the shoulder strap using our dividers. And then using a rotary hole punch, we can then punch all these holes. And again, the size of the hole will depend on the size of the buckle tongue on the chosen buckle that you are using. If you are unsure on what size to do, the best thing to do is to do some testing first, just to make sure you get the right size. We can also then even up and punch the hole on our point strap on our main bag. 
And we can now start to do our finishing touches to the main bag. So what we're going to do is using some sandpaper and we're going to wrap that around our bone folder. And we're just going to sand down the edges of the bag just to get them nice and even. So this will make it easier for us to get a nice finish on the edges of our bag. Once we've done sanding, we can then restain and polish the edges of the bag. And we are also going to restain our straps that we have made as well. And then we're going to recrease everything also. The reason I want to do some recreasing on this is because during the stitching process, the original crease line can fade. So this is just going to cement it back in place and just give a nice finish to our bag. And we can recrease the fixed loop on our buckle strap. As well as recreasing around the turns and the rest of the strap. And what I'm going to do to finish this off is using some leather care. I'm going to just feed the bag and give it a nice finish to it. So I'm going to apply the leather feed with a sponge. And then once I've covered it all with the leather feed, I can then use a cloth just to buff that finish. So that is the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe for more videos and tutorials. And why not check out some more of my videos by clicking on one of these links here.